Let me call to order this meeting of the City of Bloomington Planning Commission for July 12th, 2021. Uh, let's begin with calling the roll. Burrell? Here. King? Here. Herrera? Here. Kinsey? I believe Kinsey will be absent this evening. Yeah. Cockrum? Here. Sandberg? Here. Seabor? Here. St. John? Here. And Whistler? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing that we do have a quorum, uh, we will continue. Uh, we do have a, a fairly brief uh, agenda this evening. Um, we have minutes to be approved, uh, reports, resolutions, communications, and only one petition uh, tonight. That is SP 1521. So um, we have minutes to be approved from the June 14th meeting. Uh, are there any questions, additions, or corrections to those minutes? If none, is there a motion to approve? Move approval of our June 14 minutes. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the June 14 minutes, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm not opposed, mm -hmm. but I'm abstaining since I was not there at that meeting. All right. Uh, the motion uh, does carry and the minutes are approved. I will move on now to reports, resolutions, and communications. Are there any reports from staff? Oh, I do not have any. Director Robinson is here. Uh, I don't know if he has any. I think we're good. Okay. Are there any reports or communications from uh, commissioners? I see Commissioner Cockrum. Um, go ahead. Uh, as I did the last time this case was... Uh, um, uh, just, um, talked about and discussed amongst the planning commission. I will have to recuse myself from the discussion as I represent Blooming Foods as their real estate broker and their consultant, actually consulting them on this property, uh, this particular property. So when the discussion starts, I'll just uh, step off of the meeting. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cockrum. Uh, any other reports or communications from commissioners? Okay, then we'll get right to it. The uh, petition before us is SP-15-21. This is Trinitas Ventures. Uh, this is request for site plan approval uh, for a property at 3216 East 3rd Street. Um, this is a uh, second hearing. We have uh, Eric Grulich to uh, present. Are you with us, Eric? I am. Thank you. All right, take it on. away. Take it away. Uh, this is the second hearing for Trinitas for the site that they are looking to redevelop on the east side of town. Uh, this is the uh, location of the former Kmart uh, at the southwest corner of 3rd and Clariz. Um, the petitioners are here to request site plan approval to allow for the site to be redeveloped with a new uh, apartment complex uh, for approximately 340 student uh, oriented housing and multifamily apartments. Um, so this was heard at the May Planning Commission meeting. Uh, there were a variety of comments that were expressed at that meeting from the Planning Commissioners and staff um, regarding some sustainable design elements that the Planning Commission would like to see incorporated, uh, you know, mostly recommendations to try to uh, improve what was being proposed. Um, so the petitioner has given us a list, uh, and this was in the packet, of those elements that are included with the project. Uh, Planning Commission also expressed some concern regarding uh, some of the building end caps um, and asked for some additional improvements to those sections of the building uh, that has been addressed by the petitioner. And I'll kind of go through those uh, in a minute when I get to the uh, elevations. Uh, there was also some concerns uh, expressed regarding some of the dumpster locations, uh, as well as some of the electrical transformer boxes that were located in the front of the buildings between the buildings and the street. Uh, the petitioners worked to move all of those transformer locations, uh, as well as screen some of the, the dumpsters a little bit better. Um, a 
lot of comments were given regarding the parking garage. Uh, the petitioner has made uh, uh, some significant changes to that garage uh, to improve the looks of that. Uh, again, I'll kind of step through that when we get to the elevations in a minute. Um, and then there were also some comments given regarding the sidewalk connection that is being proposed from Third Street into the development. Um, so the petitioner made some improvements and changes to, to that area as well. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a, a minute as well. Uh, but just to kind of briefly recap uh, and go over the basics regarding the site. Um, the petition site includes the entire property and building that was formerly located um, with the Kmart building. The Blooming Food site, although it is involved with this petition, um, mostly for just improvements to the parking area, uh, the building, the Blooming Foods building itself will not be altered or changed. That will stay. Um, they will be doing improvements to the parking area around that uh, in order to bring that into compliance. Uh, but the petitioner is proposing to redevelop the entire site, um, remove the former Kmart building and all of parking areas uh, to construct several new multifamily buildings on the site. Um, so I'll just kind of step through the site plan. Not much has really changed on the overall site layout um, from what the planning commission heard in May. Um, on the north side of the site, you can see some of the parking area that will be improved. Uh, additional landscaping or new landscaping will be installed throughout that area, uh, as well as a bike rack adjacent to Blooming Foods. Um, you can see just uh, next to that, uh, the area that I mentioned um, that will have a sidewalk from Third Street uh, that was just a five foot sidewalk before the petitioners have widened that. Um, to a 10-foot sidewalk and, and showed landscaping along that to improve uh, the pedestrian experience moving from 3rd Street into the site. Um, the buildings in the middle of the site, there are four of those. These would be student-oriented. Um, there is a leasing office as well as a plaza and bus stop for Bloomington Transit uh, along the Kingston Drive frontage. Um, and then on the south side of the site uh, are two multifamily buildings as well as a parking garage. Um, so the petitioner will be doing several improvements um, to the Clariz and the Kingston frontage, um, including bike lanes, uh, sidewalks, tree plot, uh, parallel parking. Uh, there are two uh, interior drives that are being shown here. Margaret Place is the Southern Drive. Uh, Mary Agnes is the Northern Drive. Uh, those are both private driveways, um, although they have been developed to city standards. Uh, to provide for pedestrian movement, as well as tree plot, uh, parking on street, uh, and travel lanes. Um, the development itself will have a, a large green space running north-south through the site um, called Frida Park. This will connect to another park located on the south side of the site uh, called Latimer Park. Uh, that will have a variety of, uh, of amenities and design elements in there to provide open space for all of the residents within this community as well. Um, so I mentioned uh, some of the changes that the petitioner has worked on. Um, one of the things that was expressed from the planning commission um, was a, a list or an inclusion of as many sustainable design elements as possible. Uh, the petitioner has uh, given a list of those elements that are on the screen here as well as in the packet. Um, I'm not going to read through each one of those individually, uh, but they, they have given a list of different elements regarding the building and the site itself. Uh, that they believe meets uh, or furthers a lot of these sustainable design uh, goals and incentives that uh, the code offers. Um, the petitioners are not seeking any incentives. Uh, they're not utilizing any of the affordable housing incentives or the sustainable development incentives, um, you know, that would give a higher building height or allow for a higher building height. Um, so these are all things that is kind of above and beyond. Um, but they did go through and, and give a, a good list of things that would be included with this project. Um, I mentioned some of the changes to the adjacent streets. Uh, there is already a multi-use path along the third street frontage. Um, so nothing is changing on, on that element. Along the west side of the site on Kingston Drive, um, they would be installing protected bike lanes, um, sidewalk and tree plot, uh, as well as installing uh, parallel parking spaces. Uh, you can see here they're showing a bus stop in the transit plaza uh, just on the south side of the leasing office. Um, over on the Clear Ridge Drive frontage, uh, they would be removing one of the travel lanes in order to install a protected bike lane, uh, as well as a tree plot 
and sidewalk along that frontage. Um, and then, as I mentioned, both of the interior drives would have sidewalks and tree plots uh, running on both of those um, frontages as well. Um, bicycle parking. The petitioners have shown a variety of bicycle parking opportunities for the residents here, both inside the building as well as external. Um, there will be dedicated rooms set aside in each of the buildings for bicycle parking, as well as covered bike parking provided outside of all of the buildings. Um, so you can see those indicated on the site plan. Um, nothing has changed in that regard. Uh, the petitioners are required to meet all of the bicycle parking spaces that are required. Um, and I believe they're showing close to 186 bicycle parking spaces, both including the interior and exterior spaces. Um, so that meets the UDO requirements for bicycle parking. Um, one of the comments made at the last hearing was um, in regards to landscaping and buffering regarding some of the dumpster enclosures, uh, as well as some of the transformer boxes that were shown on the site. Um, the petitioner has moved all of those transformer boxes out of the front yards. Um, so that is in compliance with the UDO requirements. Um, they've also included um, a dog area as well as a, a no mow area. So the petitioners have, as part of their sustainable design elements that they are including, set aside uh, several portions around the site that would be no mow areas uh, that would be seeded with native landscaping uh, and flowers. Um, so this works to help buffer some of these dumpster enclosures as well as increase the amount of sustainable design elements on the project. Um, so those are those are shown on the landscaping plan as well. Um, one of the other one of the other elements that was discussed at the last hearing that um, we were looking for some improvements on uh, were some of the end caps of the buildings, uh, especially the sides that were facing the public streets. Um, so the petitioners went through some of those end caps uh, and looked for additional areas where they can make improvements. Um, so they went along each of those end caps and kind of made a, a variety of unique changes to each of those portions of the building, uh, including additional windows, um, widening those window areas, uh, widening the awnings, um, increasing some of the design elements around the buildings and around the windows. Um, and so that uh, did greatly increase the, the look and the view of those end caps, uh, which was something that was a concern from staff and the planning commission as well. Um, one of the last areas for revision that have changed uh, have been for the parking garage. Um, so the petitioner has made a, a couple changes along the parking garage, including widening uh, the columns that are in each element um, and closing those elements between the modules uh, a lot more, extending the parapet all the way from the bottom to the, the top of the awning so that it is more of a seamless um, building facade. Uh, as well as adding additional glazing at the building corners um, so that, that those are improved as well. Um, so here are the renderings for the parking garage. These are the revised renderings. Um, so these are certainly an improvement um, over the previous renderings. Um, so these are uh, compliant with the UDO uh, in terms of what is required for building facades. Um, so they've addressed the anti-monotony standards that are applicable here for this, or I'm sorry, not the anti-monotony, um, the exterior design features that are required. Um, so buildings must incorporate three out of four design elements, uh, change in building height, um, which they have shown through these raised parapets uh, around the building facades, uh, a regular pattern of glass around the ground floor comprising not less than 50%. Um, and then also awnings uh, extending around the building exterior ground floor as well, uh, which they have shown um, for these buildings as well. Um, so this is just kind of a look of the, the previous rendering for the garage. This is what the Planning Commission saw in May. Um, so you can kind of compare and contrast that with what is being proposed and shown here. Um, so there, there have been some improvements made to the uh, design of the parking garage. Um, so the petitioners have modified some of the landscaping on the site. Uh, you know, I mentioned the, the butterfly garden that has shown up on the northwest side, uh, as well as some of the no mow areas, especially adjacent to the uh, stormwater detention areas, uh, as well as along the north side of the site uh, coming in from Third Street. Uh, you can see the sidewalk and then some of the 
additional landscaping and no mow areas that are being proposed adjacent to that area. Um, so that helps uh, definitely increase the, the view uh, as well as add a, a lot of good quality landscaping along the, uh, the third street frontage um, and along the sidewalk. Um, so petitioners have submitted a landscape plan. Um, we've tentatively reviewed that. Uh, no major issues have been identified with that landscape plan. We're still working on finalizing a few details uh, of the landscape plan, but that will be resolved prior to uh, issuance of the grading permit. Um, so there are still some renderings that are submitted. Uh, these have not really changed at all since the uh, last hearing in May, um, but these have been included in your packet as well, uh, just kind of giving a good overall view of the, the project as a whole. Um, so with that, we are recommending that the plan commission adopt the proposed findings uh, and approve this case um, with the three conditions that are listed in staff report. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Uh, is there a representative of the petitioner who would like to uh, add anything to the presentation? Eric, who would that be probably? Mark, okay, it's just a second. Yeah, hi, Jackie. I think um, I think actually Ryan Call will be the right person who's going to be making a brief presentation for us. Okay. Was there? And I see Ryan. I think there he is. Great. Is it possible to have my video yep. also turned on? You Great. should be able to now. All right. Now I can put my hand down. <laughs> All right. I shoot. There we go. Okay. So, thanks. All right, I'm going to share my screen really quick. And um, as usual, Eric did a fantastic and thorough job. So good evening, planning commissioners. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Really appreciate uh, your comments in the last hearing and how it influenced or designed where we are tonight. Uh, we put together a very concise presentation, though we do have our planning submission on hand. Uh, for reference, if you would like to ask a more in-depth questions. We also have our entire consultant team here tonight, Mark Becker with Trinitas, myself with ELS as the master planner, uh, Principal Dan Bruger with CSO Architects out of Indianapolis, uh, Josh uh, Anderson with uh, Anderson Bolander, our landscape architect, David Marshall, THP, and uh, Jeff Fanyo with Bynum Fanyo, our engineering team. And actually, let me do a uh, full screen here. All right. So tonight, we're going to just really quickly recap process and feedback, go over the refinement of the design, uh, and then uh, leave as much time as we can for question and answer. Uh, the process has been a very comment rich, very feedback rich, and the uh, availability and willingness to assist uh, coming from the planning department has been extraordinary. So. Uh, the, uh, our initial neighborhood meeting, our post-filing comments, our planning commission meeting number one, and the last two months especially have led to where the design is today. And uh, we greatly appreciate the transparency and willingness to communicate what the intent of the UDO and transportation plan is from your staff. Uh, the, the transportation plan itself uh, is is uh, combined with the uh, vision behind the unified development or ordinance is just an extraordinary way to help create this walkable livable city uh, that is quite beautiful and uh, we're just always impressed with the precedent that's here already there's nothing abstract about what's been written into the udo or the transportation plan because you can live it and breathe it right in your downtown. Uh, so uh, certainly uh, our design team was very excited to enact those ideas on the site. The opportunity of course is 
uh, uh, popping up all over the country. Retail is is transforming, and there's a huge opportunity to uh, redevelop the excess retail sites into something that's already adjacent to all the transportation and amenities uh, in place. And so this site represents that opportunity to build up and in. Just a highlight of the benefits that we've realized on the site through the UDO and the vision and transportation plan is over one and a half acre of parks and gathering space, extremely walkable block infrastructure at 270 by 270. We've got a mile of sidewalks, half a mile of bike lanes, uh, plenty of bike parking. The site was less than 7% permeable. It is now 40% permeable. Uh, the trees, almost 300 new trees. So the list goes on. These are the highlights, but it, it really is um, uh, all uh, credit to the UDO and transportation plan. Of course, taking all of those statistical requirements and translating them into a memorable placemaking design with you know bigger benefits is, is our job. And so uh, one of the, the benefits that we realized right away was let's put housing next to the retail. It's the ultimate convenience. There's an opportunity here to reinforce your existing local and national chain retailers. There's a chance to create a gathering and park space in a district that doesn't have that much at all. And there's a chance to put the housing where it belongs, which is inside the city, uh, rather than redevelop your beautiful countryside. So still so convenient to your community. Uh, the design refinements themselves, uh, Eric did a great job, so I'll be extra brief here. Uh, in general, the, the comment from the Planning Commission last time that really resonated was this concept of NOMO and combining that concept with uh, a, a native plant species and the ecology that native plant species supports was a, a really exciting idea for us. So Josh Anderson came back uh, to our team with the idea of let's create a butterfly, let's use a butterfly metal seed mix, uh, enhance the ecology of the site, and then also create more visual interest, biodiversity, and uh, a more meaningful and telling place about Indiana. So as you can see here, uh, stretching from the south side all the way up through the north, we've introduced this butterfly seed mix. And then we've actually introduced this idea of an educational park uh, here at the corner of Kingston and Mary Agnes. And the concept is that we would have a uh, plaque that would talk about the native uh, 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 plant species and the ecologies that they support, and then we'd be able to demonstrate it right there on site. The other uh, secondary aspect that uh, benefit that came with this idea was we created room for a fenced dog run. So folks that live in this community have a place to run their run their animals and that's all grass uh, and then secondary benefit but also important is we're using these landscape elements to create a visual buffer to the trash and transformer enclosure uh, blooming foods you know today in its current form the asphalt comes right up to the sidewalk up on third street so uh, it's not an atypical experience we see that all over the place but uh, through the udo and its requirements we are creating a 40 foot setback from that sidewalk. Uh, that is a combination of the butterfly seed mix and other landscape elements, trees. And then uh, as Eric described earlier, we've uh, created two north-south connecting sidewalks. Currently, as you experience Blooming Foods today, uh, there is not a formal sidewalk along the store frontage itself that connects to Third Street, nor uh, down to the, the southern part of our site. So we've introduced this idea of a sidewalk that comes down. Uh, you can use that to access the stairs or ramp that goes into Blooming Foods. Uh, it also uh, extends further down and picks up our sidewalk network that will take you east-west to the crosswalks uh, at Clariz or Frida Park. The architecture itself, uh, very strong feedback on the parking garage and then uh, uh, and ask to make the end caps a bit more of a, a design statement. The end caps exist at actually quite prominent locations. These two end caps front Third Street, so they're highly visible. They have a formal uh, framing of Frida Park. On the south, in a similar manner, Latimer Park is framed by the end caps of the two multifamily buildings. 
The parking garage itself here is across from our, our uh, leasing office and our transit plaza. So it also has a, a strong presence. And we focused on this corner. In addition to the other improvements, we focused on this corner. So uh, these are the end cap revisions that occur that frame Latimer Park. So if you uh, approach the site on Margaret Place, you will be greeted by a pedestrian uh, scale colonnade that expresses uh, a higher level of detail and visual interest, shade and shadow uh, at the column at the um, at the grade level, and then to help accentuate the building massing above that, the uh, CSO uh, introduced this idea of vertical board and batten siding that helps break up the horizontal uh, 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 horizontal siding, and then also doubled the width of these windows. Uh, to accentuate the transparency uh, associated with the door and the corridor and this corner unit here. This is a rendering produced by CSO and our landscape architect of the uh, Latimer Park and how these end caps right here frame Latimer Park on both sides. At Third Street, we have the end cap facade that frames free to park on either side, which you can see highlighted here in this plan. The entry is a very important element. So we widened the canopy over the entry. We introduced glazing on the top and on the sides of the entry. We also brought the glazing down closer to the ground on the units here on the side for more commercial uh, kind of traditional downtown experience or uh, expression. And then we widened the windows that correspond with the corridor inside the building so that at night or during the day, the activity of people going to and from their units is something that would be visible from the street and part of the life that the building generates. This is the rendering that also shows our new sidewalk that connects Third Street down to Frida Park. Uh, and it shows the buildings with the widened windows and the uh, express canopies. The parking garage received probably the most significant changes. As you can see here on the left, it was a uh, cast in place structure, very much a grid expression. Uh, the cable stayed railings. All of that was replaced with a precast structure. So it changed the whole structure of the garage. We'll have a much nicer finish on the precast itself at the corner, again, to accentuate that gateway moment of Margaret Place and the, the transit plaza, we've introduced a three-form glass system where uh, we there's a biophilic pattern based on uh, the branches and Latimer woods that will be incorporated into these glass panels that will accentuate the arrival point of the garage. It'll help people lead to uh, you know make that left and turn into the garage, and then it also helps create some more, a more positive visual interest to this highly visible corner. So I will now hand this over to Dan Bruger with CSO to go through our design, uh, sustainable design measures. Uh, thank you, Ryan, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. So if you wanna just slowly scroll through these, I'm not gonna read each one of these in detail um, to you. You can each read them as they appear on the screen, but we now um, have an extensive list of sustainable practices and features ranging from the broader site redevelopment down to the architecture, uh, exterior architecture of the buildings, down to the interior um, features and fixtures within the buildings. And these range everything from preservation and indeed restoration of the natural habitat and resources to opportunities for energy conservation, um, increased occupant wellness, uh, heat island effect mitigation, et cetera. So this slide, for example, we're, we're showing the uh, light colored um, roof that can help in the urban heat island mitigation um, per the sustainable development practices as identified in the Bloomington UDO. Um, Again, many other uh, points on this list I could go into detail in the question and answer period, but we thought we would just kind of show these slides for now and let you read them as we, as we exhibit. And we've shared this presentation with uh, Eric and, and, and it will all be available. One thing I'd like to say about the site design is this site really present, presents the perfect opportunity for infill. Uh, the, bus, you know, the bus lines are already there. 
the grocery stores are already there. The restaurants are already there. It's one of the few spots in Bloomington where you can really beat the convenience of online retail and putting the housing right there helps uh, bolster those, those local and national tenants in place. Uh, we're also excited about uh, using the grinding up the asphalt that's out there and actually using that as part of the fill on the site and uh, making the best use we can of that, that existing uh, parking lot. So that is our, our show tonight and uh, we'll hand it back to the city, uh, but we're happy to answer any questions you might have. And again, we have all of our team here tonight. So thank you for your time. Great, thank you very much. Um, we will now go back to uh, the commission for any questions. Uh, either for staff or for the petitioner. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Kate, go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks very much, Eric, and thanks to the petitioners for walking us through the, uh, the revisions and for the revisions being uh, so responsive to a number of the comments that were received earlier. Uh, I had a couple of um, quick questions. One is when I was looking at the calculation of the parking spaces, it looked to me like the Blooming Foods parking surface parking spaces were included in there. And I just want to make sure I was understanding this. Are they being calculated into the uh, meeting the requirement for sufficient parking for the student and multifamily use combined? And if so, what uh, what does that do, if anything, to the availability of parking for Blooming Foods patrons? Um, so that's my, kind of my first question. I'm not sure who did, whether I should direct that first to Eric, to petitioners. I, yeah. can, I can certainly address that um, first, and if petitioners can add anything if they, they want to add. Um, so yes, the, the parking for, this is all one property. Um, so mm -hmm. that is technically included for all of the parking on site. Um, it is available for everybody who both uses Blooming Foods and lives on the site. Um, you know, honestly, I think most of the people that live here are going to be using the parking garage um, structure. Um, but the, the parking spaces for Blooming Food do count towards all of the on-site, both minimums and maximums. And, and do we have any sense of kind of how that measures up against people who are just not residential that are coming in just to shop at Blooming Foods. Do you anticipate any issues there? So I'll, I'll add to that just really quick. And then Mark, if you'd like to add anything I missed, but essentially our, our primary objective was to, you know, Blooming Foods today has a really amorphic parking area. It blends with the Fifth Thirds Bank, it blends with the Kmart, and it really lacks kind of definition, but we did identify, I think it was 90, about 90 spaces that are, you know, most practical for their use right now. And so we've delivered in that, that parking lot, it was important for us to deliver in that parking lot, that, that number of spaces that, you know, they're using today. And the several of the advantages we had came from the UDO allowed us to scale the size of the spots down just a little bit and the aisles a little bit narrower so that we could introduce a lot of that uh, landscape island area. Uh, so we did make sure that Blooming Foods has the parking that they are used to having for their customers. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not I, I'm not sure we will know, I guess, until, you know, based on what Eric said, if most people park in the garage, then it sounds like, Brian, that will suffice to allow for enough parking to the Blooming Foods patrons who don't live there to get in um, and out. Uh, so that's kind of what I guess, you know, what I'm getting at is just to make sure there's no negative that, impact in that business. I think Mark can actually add some clarity on the policy. Of, of their rentals and how that relates to students and how they use parking. Can Mark get unmuted? Just a second. Thanks, Jackie. Uh-huh, yeah, and just, if he just stays unmuted, that'd be helpful. Yeah, sorry, there was somebody okay. running a leaf blower oh. <laughs> next to me. I feared nobody else wanted to hear that as well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that, that's a great question, and thanks for bringing that up. So as Ryan had said, the 
amount of parking for Bloomy Foods will be relatively unchanged. Like it's important for a grocery store to have a surface parking lot in front of them. And, and we are um, continuing to use that. The um, parking garage itself will have 378 spaces. And then we also do have um, uh, some surface spaces that are along the streets, the internal streets within the, par within the project. So some parallel parking spaces. Um, the UDO requires us to have a 0 0.5, um, a 0 0.5 ratio per student housing. And then actually none is required as a minimum for, um, for multifamily. So we are, so the parking garage will be for residents itself of the, of the, um, of the project. And that ratio that, that we see is, is very similar to what we've used in other projects as well, especially when you consider this is on a bus line, um, that it is close to the existing um, retail and commercial nodes through here as well as close to campus. So um, so that, that does seem like a reasonable parking ratio to us as well. Uh, one of the things that I think Ryan had mentioned that we had mentioned in our last um, plan commission meeting too, is that the parking, we will charge for parking that's actually for those to park in the parking garage, but that will be a separate charge from rent. So that's broken apart. I know that was something that, that people were, were very interested in. So I wanted to make sure that we had pointed that out as well. Yeah, yeah, and thank you. I think that's a good, a good thing. I mean, I guess, you know, I'm assuming that even though there's maybe no minimum on the multifamily uh, residential, that some people are going to have cars. And they're, even though this is, as you say, and I think right, so it's well set up for buses, it's walkable to a lot of things. I mean, it is the kind of perfect regional development in that regard. So, uh, okay, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. We wanted to make sure that we had enough that we could lease, um, that there was enough for tenants that, and residents that wanted to have a car so that they that the project would be leasable. Um, and then also, um, you know, any sort of financing that we go through, um, the people that finance these want to make sure that there's plenty of parking as well. So I think we feel that there's more than adequate for it. Thank you. Uh, and then I guess... Um, my other question is uh, has to do with solar. Uh, you mentioned uh, the light roofs, which uh, which is good. Had you all considered solar paneling on the roofs for this project? And if so, what was your thinking along those lines? In rejecting that, Mark. Yeah, I I, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, we had looked at that, and unfortunately for for our project, it didn't make sense um, economically to include those in there. So that is not something we're currently including in the project. Okay. Uh, and then I, my final uh, question, maybe, uh, well, it is a question. I, when I look at uh, the coloration and, and, you know, the changes to the buildings have definitely helped uh, additional modulation, uh, uh, some of the you know, window expansion that uh, you were pointing out, Ryan was pointing out earlier. Um, this may just be me. I, I do wonder still about when I look at the, um, well, especially the multifamily residential, um, but to some extent the students too, uh, whether there's any opportunity for some further color variation there that would make that look more like a series of maybe townhomes as opposed to a more monolithic color scheme um, that you have right now. Is that is that a possibility? Is that an option? Well, it's it's a big debate. You know, it's interesting. Uh, there's, uh, we had a lot of discussions about this, and we're, uh, you know, the background behind that discussion is that, you know, do you do you express something that's kind of true to, uh, you know, its its development, which is these are these buildings will all be built at the same time, and they are um, multifamily flats, and they're not, you know, they're not townhomes, uh, or do you do something that does kind of embody something that is. Uh, more varied. What you see in your own downtown are buildings that developed on lots that were 50 to 37 or uh, 100 feet wide. There's just this incredible variety. But you know, our development pattern, uh, to be honest, to what it is, uh, is is completely different than that. So we went with the route that uh, the color variety that we have be between the student housing and the multifamily and the parking deck. There's three color palettes there already was enough to kind of drive the diversity and visual interest that people would uh, expect. But then we decided to stay with, you know, these buildings are, um, 
you know, they are of one development in a sense. So we didn't want too much going on, if that kind of makes sense. I hear you. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to see a little bit more color, but it's not the kind of thing that um, would prevent me from joining this up. Uh, and I sure. do appreciate uh, the responsiveness um, of the petitioners to have both the staff input, our input, and, and others' input as well. And you can really see it. So thank you. That's all I've got. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Um, not seeing any. Uh, I guess I've got one question. Can, can you just talk about, um, it was a little bit difficult to uh, decipher what's what's happening along Claire is. It, it looks like um, there's obviously a lot of new landscaping going in there and, and new sidewalk. Can, can you maybe just address, um, you know, how this impacts the current uh, street? I mean, right now, uh, I think you've, you've got four, uh, two lanes in either directions with the median. And it, it looks just kind of from what I can tell that the, the road is narrowing a bit there. Can, can you just kind of elaborate a little bit on what's on the changes that'll happen to traffic along Claire is? Sure. Eric, do you want to answer that or would, I, I'm happy to answer it. What, what do you, what is your preference? Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, okay. I'll, I'll go through it really quick. And if I miss anything, uh, chime in. Uh, so on Clariz, uh, we are narrowing that street to one traffic uh, through lane, uh, you know, on the, on the west side of that median. So everything on the east side of that median stays uh, as is, but on the west side of the median, we are introducing a protected bike lane, a tree, a tree plot, and then the sidewalk and, and have one lane of traffic here. So in that, in that direction, the traffic volumes, uh, you know, this direction came with, uh, with advice from the city that this was a, uh, that there was capacity to do this on Clariz. So it's, Eric, do you want to add any more to that? Um, no, I, I think that's a pretty good summary so far. You know, we, we'd had a lot of discussions internally uh, with the engineering and transportation staff um, and, and we're very happy with the cross sections that were come up, devised. Um, we'll continue to, to look into that a little bit more with the grading permit process. And if there's anything that needs to be altered, we'll. Uh, kind of finalize it with that. But so far, uh, we haven't identified any problems with the, uh, the changes. And, and we're certainly very happy to uh, increase the amount of transportation options for folks, both bicyclists and pedestrians and vehicles. I guess, uh, I guess my concern is, is just that, you know, you got an awful lot of people if you're traveling in that southbound lane, um, pretty much anybody in that southbound lane is going to be turning right at some point, right? Either turning into this development or turning into the mall, or um, you don't have any concerns about um, kind of lose. I mean, right now you effectively have a right turn lane because you have two lanes there. No concerns about um, congestion due to people turning. Um, well, I, I guess, you know, in, in this regard, I'd, I'd possibly lean on our, our transportation engineer, Andrew Seabor. Um, if he wants to add any comments to that, he might be the best person most qualified to address that. Sure, I'll quickly jump in. So um, right now, as was discussed, there's two southbound lanes on Clariz. Um, when you look at the corridor as a whole between Third Street and a bit to the south, um, south of the mall, there's only one lane in each direction and up at the intersection with Third Street, there is only one lane that ever feeds this section of Clariz. So you can never really have two cars coming in at the same time from the north approach, the east or the west. Um, so we're confident that one lane of traffic will work. Um, at each of the drives, there will be right turning, there will be turning activity. Um, and I think that it will be distributed by the number of access points provided. And there will be some you know, slowing caused by that, but I don't think it will get to the point of significant traffic congestion that we need to worry about. Um, a very, very 
detailed maybe question or comment I actually had on this section was that a, a small piece I think is a bit more constrained by blooming foods um, where I think the tree plot is narrowed and things are a little narrower. I was just curious how long that stretch is um, just because I know a, a four foot wide tree plot in particular can be challenging for trees um, to, to survive. So I don't know if this is getting too detailed, but that was a, a one question maybe I would throw out there on this topic. Josh, Josh Anderson could answer, uh, with Anderson Bolander could speak to that stretch. Josh, are you there? Can he, uh, can, uh, can we unmute Yes, Josh? just a second. Okay, no problem. Should be good to go. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Um, so if I heard your question right, Andrew, um, hi, by the way, uh, were you, the, are you talking about the stretch on Parallel to Clariz, that stretch, yeah. So um, we have done in the past plantings in um, planter beds as narrow as three and a half um, and had them survive. Uh, we've also had them not do well and have kind of learned which species tend to kind of survive the urban conditions a little bit, um, especially when they have no narrow planting areas. Um, I think at the width we have at, with, with the mechanical equipment on the West, it's kind of the, um, the best situation or the best alternative we have given the space that we have um, is kind of the way I'd put it. Um, and, you know, we'd be careful to um, use pretty hardy selections. In an ideal world, we'd like to have, you know, a six foot tree lawn, but um, with the space that we have available here, um, we think this will um, this can work. Well, I appreciate I you know more than about trees than, than I certainly do, and I guess just it's a more of a detailed question as the project goes forward. Uh, so, Andrew, you know, I'll just kind of chime in a little bit. You know, this is this is not the final uh, design of that road. We can certainly look at that further uh, when the grading permit process comes through, uh, and if there are any changes or modifications, we can we can still make changes then. So this is not uh, locking that in by any means. Yeah, I will also add. Sorry, Jackie Scanlon, Development Services Manager. I know some of these roads are going to be right of way, and some aren't at this point. Um, those that are in the right of way. Uh, for example, like talking about Clariz, um, <clears throat> while these drawings are helpful for the plan commission to weigh, they don't, you don't get to make the decision about what goes there. That will be up to engineering and BPW at a later date. So this is the plan and obviously staff has worked on it uh, and um, thinks you know, it can work, but uh, this could change. Uh, for example, if there are tree plots that are shown too thin, I mean, UDO has minimum requirements, so those will have to be met. Um, uh, so while, um, while those details that are on the site, we, you obviously do have purview over and the UDO does address some things like tree species and that type of thing. Um, the actual change to Clara's Boulevard isn't something that, uh, we kind of get to decide here, uh, though it's, oh, it's fine to discuss and obviously, uh, see the illustrative, um, plan here, but that will be, as Eric said, discussed further by um, staff as well as uh, uh, BPW, I believe uh, they may need to weigh in on that change, just so everyone knows. Thanks. And, and sometimes, you know, in these situations, um, you know, we'll try to balance uh, a sidewalk and a tree plot with. Um, so, you know, we might look at a situation where the sidewalk narrows down to maybe six feet um, so that we can get a minimum five foot tree plot in there. Um, so, but those are, those are the inner details that we'll work out with the grading permit. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Um, Eric, you mind stopping the screen share? There we go. I can't see if anybody else is raising their hand. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay, seeing none, I think it's uh, time for public comment. If you would like to make a comment uh, on this petition, please 
uh, raise your virtual hand. Uh, you can do that by clicking on the reactions button uh, or sometimes the participants button and finding that button that says raise hand. Uh, we will recognize you in uh, as best we can in the order that your hand was raised. Uh, once you're recognized, please state your name, your full name uh, for the record, and you'll have five minutes uh, to make comment. So um, Jackie will recognize you when it's your turn to speak and let's begin. Great. Ellen, you should be able to unmute. Yes. Go ahead. Ellen Mills. I live on the north side beyond Third Street. I shop at Blooming Foods regularly and I have some questions about Kingston because as I exit Blooming Foods on the unnamed interior street, there is quite a bit of traffic facing me a lot of times because it's coming from Target and Chick-fil-A, two very popular places. To the point it can be a little difficult to get onto Kingston and then Kingston backs up on the third street light, especially the left turn line. And now you're going to add not only a lot of people living there, but also a number of them will probably choose Margaret Place to come out, which means they're gonna be through traffic. And I'm waiting behind a stop sign and the target Chick-fil-A people are waiting behind a stop sign. Has any thought been made to how you're gonna deal with the increase in traffic there? Oh, is Thank there? You. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, this is really not a time for back and forth discussion during public comment. Um, just okay. make your comment and then we'll, we'll do our best to make sure that your questions get answered. But okay. uh, that because is my we have comment. limited time for each speaker, we need, yeah. to, we need to just stick to, uh, to comment as opposed to um, uh, full on discussion at this point. So thank you for your comments. Okay. Is there anyone else uh, who would like to make public comment? If, uh, if you have trouble finding that raise hand button, feel free to send uh, a chat message, but uh, oh, do you see one more one. hand raise? Yep. You should be able to unmute Mr. Akers. Okay, thanks. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi. So I appreciate the, uh, the changes that were made in terms of uh, adding a little bit more sustainability to the plan. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about, uh, and, I, and I do like the kind of the, the green divider between the, uh, the, the complex and Blooming Foods, because I would worry that the student residents living in the North buildings may cheat a little bit for time savings to park over there rather than parking in the garage and walking to their unit. So that'll be just something that the, on-site management and Blooming Foods will have to negotiate, I think, because uh, certainly the Blooming Foods customers would be the priority to be able to get into that site. Um, I, I, I hope Andrew's right with his calculations in terms of traffic. Uh, already, as Ms. Ellen just mentioned, uh, Kingston and Clariz can already be pretty backed up uh, with existing traffic and now, even if chair, even if it, you at ninety percent occupancy, if we add seven hundred and fifty or eight hundred individuals, uh, and it's not all of them will have cars, of course, just adding that much traffic to an already pretty condensed area will be difficult. Hopefully, uh, the biggest problem right now is uh, now that Chick Fil A Fil A is is we're past the pandemic, and hopefully they're going to be selling from inside that backup has gone on to third street it's been kind of a nightmare and in target a very popular retail establishment with all their traffic hopefully you know the residents will walk over to target ideally and i and i do love the the addition of lots and lots of bicycle parking both inside and outside that's great uh the bloomington transit bus stop that i think is going to be on kingston so i can see you know you're dealing with so many additional people at the site where are they going where are they going to park how are they going to get in and out uh it's it's quite a challenge so uh i think that's all the comments i have for now thank you very much 
And I'm sorry, this is Steve Akers from the Park Ridge neighborhood across Third Street. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Akers. Um, are there any other public comments? Okay, last call for public comment. Um, one more time, you can indicate that you'd like to speak by clicking on the reactions tab or the participants tab and clicking that raise hand button or just sending a chat message uh, to myself or to Jackie Scanlon. Going once, going twice. Okay, that will conclude public comment. We are now back to the commission for any final comments or uh, for a motion. I see uh, Commissioner Sandberg, go ahead. Thanks. Let's go ahead and address some of the public comments with respect to the traffic and the traffic calculations. Um, and, uh, you know, if I could just add to whoever would like to answer that, if we do find there to be problems here um, after the fact, and again, once occupancy is achieved, what remedies can be done there to um, speed things along or route things in a better direction? Is it, does it always come down to traffic lights? Well, uh, so traffic management is certainly is a, is a very uh, touchy subject with a lot of folks, uh, but there are very clear cut standards uh, in terms of how you manage that and when traffic improvements are required. Um, so there are stop signs, you know, that is usually the, the first step, you know, there are certain warrants that have to be met for intersections in order to uh, justify traffic control devices. Um, so I believe there are stop signs currently leading into Kingston. Um, from the east and the west, um, you know, certainly it could be looked at in the future if, if traffic gets to be worse uh, to put in four-way stops. Uh, you know, that just kind of depends on traffic movements and counts, uh, but that's always something that is on, on the table for discussion. Um, you know, and obviously the, the higher end of that traffic control would be a stoplight. Um, I don't think there's certainly going to be enough traffic coming through here in either direction to warrant that. Uh, but a four-way stop here is something that could be considered in the future, uh, you know, if the traffic gets to be worse and, and people are having uh, turning movements. Okay, thanks. I hope that covered the questions from both of the public comments. Thank you, Commissioner Sandberg. Any other final comments from commissioners? Anyone like to make a motion? Eric, would you mind putting the uh, staff recommendation uh, back on the screen? So I believe staff has recommended uh, approval of this site plan with uh, three conditions. I move we approve uh, SP-1521 with the three conditions that staff has recommended. Second. Okay, so we have uh, a motion and a second uh, to approve uh, the site plan with three conditions as recommended by staff. Are there any final comments before we call the roll? All right, seeing none, um, let's call the roll. Hey. Yes. Herrera. Yes. Kenzie, she's still not there, okay. Cockrum, I'm sorry, he's not voting. Sandberg? Yes. Uh, Seymour? Yes. St. John? Yes. And Whistler? Yes. And Burrell? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I believe that Motion carries uh, seven zero, if I'm, if I'm counting correctly. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you all for your time. That is our only uh, petition on the agenda this evening. Um, I
appreciate your uh, your uh, being with us tonight. Jackie, can we maybe just take a moment to set an expectation for um, next next month's yes, sure. meeting? I'll do my best. Uh, as far as we know, next month will be in person. Um, and so staff and at least half of the plan commission will need to be present uh, at council and uh, in council chambers, excuse me. Um, and we will still offer um, a virtual um, attendance for the public. Um, so it'll be a hybrid meeting and some plan commission members, uh, I believe in the rules, uh, there was set out an amount of time we asked you to tell us in advance if you plan to not uh, attend in person, but I will circle back and uh, send those to you all again so that you have them, especially for those of you that serve on more than one. Uh, and um, uh, so yes, the expectation will be that we will be in person. Again, the governor could change his mind and extend again, but uh, I believe that we will plan to be there we do have a number of petitions to look at, um, and uh, we will expect that at least half of you hopefully will be in attendance. And is it safe to assume that uh, any uh, details about that would be included in the public notice that's, yes. that's released? In, in addition to the Zoom link, also some information about um, whether there's an in-person option. and Yes, um, uh, I believe, yes, there will be, and also it will be on the website. And is the expectation that um, uh, building access would be as back to normal at that point, just enter through the atrium and um, that is the head on my, into the council chambers? Sure. My understanding, and anyone, any staff can correct me, is that they will just have the um, seats uh, uh, separated. There will be some um, encouragement of uh, social distancing, um, but yes, we will be in council chambers. Excellent. So well, thank you, Jackie. Well just to double check, that would be five and five. That's the expectation, five on five site. Five in person. Five, okay. And the meeting will be at 5.30. And the date for anyone watching is um, August 9th next month. And, and this is Mike Rooker, uh, legal counsel for the plan commission. We just ask that you all remain uh, Flexible though, right? We, we found out that the last minute that the governor was extending the, the um, emergency through July, that may happen again in August. Nobody knows. So we appreciate your flexibility and we'll just find out at the end of the month. All right, and for, uh, yeah, for members of the public, what's the best way for them to uh, find out? Is it just uh, to look at the city website? Yes, if they go to the Planning and Transportation Department website, as soon as we know for sure, we are operating on it, it will be in person. Uh, and um, I believe that that will be the case. If something were to change, that is where we would post that information on the Planning and Transportation uh, website. Great, thank you very much. Uh, any other final questions, comments, or announcements before we adjourn? Yeah, just, just uh, so just in case you plan to to attend uh, remotely, is there any uh, number of days before we decide that, before the meeting? Uh, Mr. Worker, do you recall off the top of your head? I, uh, there was a number of days that was discussed last month. I will resend the policy um, to you all so that you know what that is. I don't remember off the top of my head. I wanna say it's roughly a week, um, but I'm not positive. Yeah, my recollection is that it's five days. I don't recall off the top of my head. I'll have to dig that up, but let's let's not do that on the fly with the public here. We'll get back to you via email so that you all know the amount of time. Great, thank you. Great. All right. Well, without uh, objection then, um, we will adjourn. Oh, wait. Thank you all. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I think everybody's just waving. I don't think- Oh, yeah, sorry. I don't think those are objections unless I- uh, Ms. Redder, I think everyone said goodbye. All right, thank you.